Hi friends, today we will see about the basics of invasive pressure monitoring. This topic is mainly focusing the beginners or who is planning to work in the ICU. In the ICUs, we usually measure the arterial pressure, the venous pressure or the central venous pressure, CVP, and the pulmonary artery pressure as well as the wedge pressure. The main point is the basic setup of all these pressure monitoring lines are the same and work with the same principles. So let's see what are the basic principles and setup to keep in mind while working with that. For understanding the setup, first we will talk about the components. In that, the very first one is the invasive line. Okay, so keep in mind, the flowing blood contains kinetic energy. While the flowing blood is suddenly interfere with the tip of the catheter this kinetic energy will convert into the pressure the next is the fluid filled tubing it provides a non-compressible and bubble free fluid between the bloodstream and the pressure transducer to make a hydraulic coupling because the pressure is uh, from the bloodstream it is transmitting through the line to the pressure transducer so we need to make it short without any kinking the other one is pressure transducer it converts the mechanical impulse of the pressure wave into an electrical signal through the movement of the displaceable diaphragm inside the next one is the flushing system it fills the pressure tubing with the fluid and helps to prevent the clotting formation inside the system by continuously flushing the fluid through the system to the patient at around 1 to 3 ml per hour rate. And uh, by keeping the pressure back at the pressure of 300 mmHg. Heparinizing the solution is optional because we need to keep in mind the thrombocytopenia patient and any bleeding tendency patient will get problem with the heparin. The last component is the monitor. It has the signal processor amplifier and the display okay the pressure transducer it relays the signal through a cable to the microprocessor where it is filtered amplified analyzed and displayed as the wave from form of a pressure versus time the next section we will see the care of pressure monitoring system in that first we will see how to optimize the natural frequency of pressure monitoring system just keep in mind Use the uh, high pressure tubings no longer than 122 centimeter. Avoid tubing extensions and minimize stop cocks. And make sure all the connections and the stop cocks are secured and tight. Eliminate the air bubbles from the tubings and the pressure uh, lines. Okay, uh, keep the pressure back with the pressure of 300 mm Hg. Uh, with or without heparin, the flush, the continuous flush, we need to keep it to prevent clotting and keep the line, the pressure lines neutral and slightly extend, uh, extended to avoid kinking. Then when to perform the fast flush test? So just keep in mind before starting the monitoring and whenever the, the waveform is not satisfactory, it is over or under damped. And whenever the physiological changes occurs with the patient, like uh, tachycardia, hypertension, hypotension, like that. And before implementing or changing the intervention with the patient. Or whenever the accuracy is in doubt with the, the pressure or uh, in the monitor. And or every 8 to 12 hours. Then the zeroing and leveling. So first we will see the zeroing. Okay. So the transducer will read the pressure accurately when the atmospheric pressure uh, will be discounted from the pressure monitoring. How we'll do that? So we need to open the pressure transducer to the atmospheric pressure and calibrate the pressure to zero. So this is called zeroing. So while doing that, we can discount the atmospheric pressure from the pressure monitoring system. The zeroing must be done several times in a day to avoid any baseline drift the next we will see the leveling 
The leveling is important once the hydrostatic pressure show up. The transducer must be set appropriate level in relation to the patient at all the time for the accuracy. If he fails to do that, we will end up in the error reading and the mismanagement. Uh, because the hydrostatic pressure being added with the normal pressure. This is usually taken to the patient heart, the fourth intercostal space in the mid axillary line. Okay, this is called phlebostasis axis. So what will happen if the transducer is too high? You will get under pressure. If the transducer below the patient heart level, you will get high pressure. I hope you enjoy the class. See you soon with the next classes. Bye bye.